The Green Goblin is a popular villain in the Marvel Universe, but goblins have ancient roots in mythology. Today, I'll share multiple allegedly true encounters with the Green Goblin people. The most terrifying night of my life began like any other. I was five years old at that time and living in Texas. It was a Saturday, I remember, so I got to stay up until 10 p.m. It was not long after I was put down for bed that I looked up and saw the most frightening image of my life. I was still completely awake, so I was not in any way dreaming. There he stood, probably five, five and a half feet tall, but only his upper body was visible. From his chest up to his head, his lower body was completely invisible, almost like he was floating in midair. He was completely green in color, a very vibrant emerald green color. He even gave off a green glow, like he was lit up from within. His ears were slightly pointed and slightly larger than a normal human's, but not drastically larger. His eyes were yellow, and they seemed to be glowing as well. His nose was large and slightly pointed, but again, not drastically. On the top of his head were a set of horns, not like a ram, but probably more like a shape of an Impala's, only smaller. His chest was bare, and he didn't have any body hair. His physique was similar to a human man. What really stood out and still haunts me to this day was his laughter. As soon as he appeared, he began this most evil cackle. He just kept laughing and staring at me as I was laying in bed. I felt the most vulnerable I've ever felt in my life. He was right in front of the door, so I couldn't escape. I know this was intentional. He was also covering a poster on my door that said something along the lines of God loving me. He was trying to isolate me and make me feel completely alone, without a way out. It seemed like forever, but in actuality, he was probably there only a minute or two. I covered my face with two of the stuffed animals I had nearby on my bed to black out the horrible glow. I could still hear the laughter for a little while longer as I lay there. Soon after, the laughter stopped, but I kept my eyes covered, afraid of what I might see. I eventually mustered up enough courage to remove the animals and peek out. He was gone, and the relief I felt was extraordinary. I can't say what it was that I saw for sure, but I can say with certainty it was a spiritual entity from a different realm, and it was evil. To this day, that is still the most traumatic experience of my life, and I wonder why it came to me. I never want to see him again. Hello, I'm Logan Bushu and I'm from Gamble, Alaska. This is my little people experience. We call them the Skohoks. Gamble is a tiny village with a population of about 700 people on St. Lawrence Island in Alaska. In 2015, I was on my way back from hunting camp. The Savunga camp I was driving back from was about 75 miles from the village of Gamble, so it was out in the middle of nowhere. When I was driving back to Gamble, the weather was very foggy and the sun was starting to set. When I got about 30 miles from town, my four-wheeler overheated, so I had to stop and let it cool down. While I was sitting on the four-wheeler, waiting for it to cool down, I saw a little man about 50 feet away at the end of the river. The little man was about two and a half feet tall maybe, and he was holding a spear, trying to fish in the river. It was one of those spears with the point in the middle and the two hooks on the side. It was traditional. I was very shocked with what I could see. This little man looked partially invisible, almost like he was partially in the spirit world and partially in the physical world. I was frozen with fear watching this little man. Totally in shock with what I was seeing. It didn't seem real. I didn't make a sound. I was dead quiet and frozen in fear, watching this little humanoid trying to fish. I did not want to draw attention to myself because I thought that he might try to come after me or kill me or something. I don't really know what I was thinking at the moment, 
but I was dealing with something totally unknown, so I knew I had to be careful. I was sitting on my four-wheeler, watching him for about seven minutes, when he finally caught a fish. His fishing spear quickly stabbed into the water and pulled out a large fish. The fish was really big compared to this little man, it was about the same size as him. After he caught the fish, he seemed to become aware of my presence. He turned around and gave me a very curious look, like he was wondering who was watching him. When he turned around after catching the fish, I realized that he was green. He had very light green skin, very green, and he was still partially transparent. That's when I realized this thing looked exactly like a little goblin. It had a long, thin, pointy nose that was hooked downwards, almost to his upper lip. He was completely bald and had large black eyes. The eyes looked human, but in relation to his head size, the, its eyes were larger than a human's. The weird thing about his eyes, unlike human eyes, they had no whites. They were solid black and beady looking. He had pointy little ears. They were not long like you see in goblin drawings, but they were more like normal human sized ears, but just pointy, maybe a little bigger than human. He was very wrinkly, and looked like an elderly man with a pointy or sharp jawline. And I'm not sure, but it looked like he may have had tattoos on himself. He was wearing a sealskin parka and sealskin pants. His sealskin parka hood was up. The parka had very thin little fur ruff around it, like a winter fox or a white fox. This little man was very skinny. His arms were maybe about as thick as a banana. He had hands like us, but green skin, and long black claws at the tip of every finger. This guy was not human, and he could carry a fish with one arm like it was nothing. He seemed really powerful and kind of cool. The look of it was not necessarily ugly, more like really tough and old. When I think back on how this thing looked, he looked like a savage, powerful hunter. After the little man looked at me, he gave me a curious expression, then proceeded to run away from me. He ran for about 30 feet, and a hole opened up in the ground right before it, and it jumped in. The hole was pitch black, but seemed to emanate a strange light. After the little green goblin-like man jumped into the hole, the hole snapped shut behind him, as if it never existed. I was feeling pretty shaken up about this, because I did not know what I was dealing with, and after the little man jumped into the hole, I was able to start my four-wheeler up, and I took off home. There is another time I saw a similar creature to this little person. It was at another camp. This camp was about 12 to 15 miles away from Gamble, so a lot closer to town. The digging area is a place where we dig up artifacts. The digging area is really close to my camp, about 20 feet away. While I was walking to the digging area, I saw a little golden or yellowish man. This man looked very similar to the little green man I saw before, but his skin color was totally different and he also had hair, solid black short hair on his head, and two little curved horns. He had large black eyes like the little green man, and there was no whites to be seen. This one's hands were also the same, except the skin color. They had the long black claws at the end of every fingernail. This little man was searching for something in the dig site, and he was talking to himself. His speech was very strange. It sounded too fast, almost like gibberish almost like a very sped up version of the Yupik language. It sounded kind of like but it had more of a Yupik sound to it than that, with harsh style words being said. And it was way too fast, it sounded almost like fast forward speech. The little man was walking around the digging area, talking to himself, searching for something when I saw him. So he was walking around, talking to himself in this really weird language. Then he turned his attention towards me as if he can feel that I was watching him, just like the last little person. I was feeling really scared at this point because this is my second little person and it looked very similar to the first, just instead of being partially transparent and green, this one looked solid and real and it was like a very bronzish tan look. I was starting to feel like maybe because I was seeing this one right after I saw the first one, Maybe these little people were trying to capture me or something. After this little horned, tanned little person looked at me, he started to run away. He ran towards the south. The weird thing about the way this little man ran was he seemed to glitch or 
or skip through the air, almost like he was out of sync with time, almost as if he was teleporting short distances and then reappearing. When it started running away, it seemed to pick up more and more speed, glitching out almost like a video game skipping, except for the speed pickup was like his glitches or his skips through the air were going further and further and faster and faster. Pretty soon he's completely out of sight. Again, this little person was a lot like the first one, except the skin color and the fact that it was not transparent like the first one. This thing looked as physical as you or me. When I was seven years old, me and my family were driving to council, which is a little campsite about 75 miles away from Nome going along the coast. It's a very long drive because it's a dirt road in the middle of nowhere. At about 16 miles out on the drive, I saw something on the side of the road that I will never forget. I saw a group of about five little people standing on the side of the road near some bushes. They were only around two and a half feet tall and were wearing muskox hide shirts. Some of them had long sleeve muskox shirts and others had short sleeve. They also had on fur pants that looked like they were made of moose skin. The weird thing about these things is they looked like little goblins. I was so shocked about what I was seeing that I didn't really pay attention to their skin color, but their future stood out to me. They had very long pointy thin noses that hooked down a little bit, kind of like what you would expect a goblin to look like. Angular features and large beady black eyes. Two of these little men seemed like the leaders. They stood out from the others because they had horns on top of their heads. One of them had very long horns. The horns were maybe about eight inches long, and the other had short little horns. I wonder what the horns meant. Was it an indication of gender? Not sure because I didn't really get a good enough look at them. The little person with the longest horns was wearing a wooden mask. It looked like a square smiley face mask, and it was tied around its head with grass rope or something. The mask was of a smiley face and looked happy. The other little person with horns also had a mask on. The rest did not. One of the little people in the group had short sleeve muskox fur shirt, and he seemed to have a missing arm at his elbow. And he waved at me smiling with his free arm. They seemed very friendly because they waved and smiled at me. Their smiles were kind of creepy though. They looked strange. The little people seemed to be pretty normal, just little goblin-like looking people with horns on some of them and seemed to have normal movement when walking. But some of them would run around and when they ran, their movements were strange. They seemed like they were jerking through the air, like they were teleporting a little bit with their fast movement. The way they ran seemed unnaturally fast, a very strange way of running. But when they were standing around and walking, their movement was normal. I told my parents what I saw, and they just dismissed me and kept driving without really checking for themselves. But I know what I saw was real because I saw it very clearly, and it was in broad daylight. This happened when I was camping with my friends at Mount Crawford, which is in South Australia. We were doing filming for a webpage we were working on. It was getting dark and I decided to go for a walk. It got darker and darker until I realized I was lost. Me being 16 years old, I was very scared. I heard footsteps about 10 meters behind me. I turned and felt my heart thumping through my ears. I looked carefully into the distance and I saw a figure dressed in black clothing. As it got closer, it started whispering. It was a male voice. I'm going to take you back to my lair in the mountains and eat your flesh and see what your body is made of. I was frozen in fear and I wanted to run, but I was too terrified to go anywhere. As it came closer, its face was red and had a long nose. Its eyebrows were thick 
and he talked without moving his lips. He looked like a little red goblin. Then I heard my friends scream out my name. I turned to see where they were for a split second, and when I looked back, the goblin was gone. I rushed back to my friends and told them, but nobody believed me. Later that night, when we were all asleep, I was awoken by footsteps again. I did not want to move, so I curled up in a ball and closed my eyes tight. The whispering started again. I will return for you again when you are alone. None of my friends believed me, and to this day, I have never returned to that place. Like a little goblin looking thing. Um, yeah, like goblins. Yeah, I've heard, had two stories about that. Um, one was back in New York. I did go back into to, uh, New York back in 2009. There was this little thing. He looked like Dobby in, in Harry Potter. But he, like it was a little old gremlin y type man with big eyes, big mouth, big ears. And he was really short, about two feet tall. And he was hiding behind this tree, and he was, like, looking at something or somebody. Like, somebody moved in and built a house in his territory. And he was sad because he got run out, and he was hiding behind this tree. And uh, somebody, a medicine person, went up to him and talked to him. He didn't answer, in, um, you know, verbally, but kind of like he read his thoughts. A telepath, and he told the medicine man that that he he lost his his home, his territory. Somebody moved in, and he he has to leave, and he doesn't know where to go. So the medicine man called something like a bird. It was like a big eagle, and it came and it it picked the the little the little gremlin man up, and it took him away someplace else. Uh, that was a back in uh, East Coast story, uh, and out here. Um, they uh, they did. Um, my mother's friend, uh, she's passed away now, but uh, she's seen something like that. Uh, she was an adventurer woman, and uh, she used to drive everywhere, and and she um, pulled over, used to pull over and side of the road and sleep. This was back in the day when it was safe to do that. Well, she pulled over. This was around in Lake County in uh, Northern California. Uh, she pulled over the side of the road and fell asleep. And so she woke up and she heard like she uh, like the gravel um, making noise. The, and the gravel was crunching and she heard little voices outside you know, outside her car. It was pitch black and she thought that maybe a cop or somebody was you know around there checking her out. So she got up and she turned on her headlights and there was two little little gremlin like men standing side of the road right in front of her her headlights and uh, she, first she thought they were kids and then she thought they were kids in Halloween costumes but it wasn't Halloween and this was way out in the middle of nowhere there was no houses and she said there were little bald men with big ears and big eyes uh, kind of really wrinkled face and they were little they kind of huddled together and she turned the lights on and she looked at them, and they looked at her, and then she said she just told herself, I didn't see nothing, and she pulled out, and she never slept side of the road anymore after that. And that was in, in, you know, in Northern Cal, and that was my mother's friend. I was four years old and living in a townhouse in Maryland at the time of the only paranormal experience I ever had. At the time, my little brother and I were sharing a bunk bed in a small room. He slept on the top bunk and I slept on the bottom. We kept most of our toys under the bed because the room was so small, so whenever I wanted to play with a toy, I'd just go and pop my head in between the wall and the bedside and take one out to play with. I loved doing this. Late one night, when my brother and the rest of the household were asleep, I found myself completely awake. No matter what I did, I just couldn't fall asleep. I remember looking out at the window at the night sky and sighing because I was trying so hard to sleep. Eventually, being bored stiff, I thought, what the heck, I'll just grab a toy from under the bed and play with it until I fall asleep. So I stuck my head under the bed, only to see what was a greenish male humanoid being 
something like a gnome with wide open, large, human-like eyes, sitting, smiling, and playing with one of the toys under my bed. I distinctly remember him being completely focused on playing with the toy, smiling and making exclamations of joy, in the same way a baby or a toddler does when playing with a fun toy. I remember the toy itself was making the usual sounds toys make when played with. I don't remember what he was wearing, but I'm pretty sure he was wearing something. He was probably about 10 inches away from where my face was, and he was pretty surprised to see me. But he wasn't scared at all. He seemed happy and very curious to see me. Throwing the toy aside, he began to inch closer. I remember his huge smile and big eyes getting closer to me, and I, of course, completely freaked out. This all happened within a matter of seconds. I specifically remember my face contorting into an expression of shock and fear, and I just couldn't get my head out from under the bed fast enough. I just stayed in bed for the rest of the night, as there was no way I was getting out of bed. I was absolutely convinced that he was going to reach out his hand from under the bed and grab me because I had seen him when I wasn't supposed to. But nothing happened after that. After a couple of hours of being awake and afraid, I ended up falling asleep. The strange thing was that before and after I dunked my head under the bed, I could hear absolutely nothing. It was all perfectly still and quiet in my room, but when I was seeing him, I was aware of the noise he was making. I swear this really happened to me, and I think it only came about because I caught him completely off guard. It was not a dream. Needless to say, I never stuck my head under the bed again after that. A lot of you probably don't know, but I'm actually a Nupiaq Eskimo and I live in Alaska. And we have stories of these little green men going back a long time. In Anuktuvik Pass, they actually say that the little people have hooved feet. And when I was looking for images to match what the little people allegedly look like, I would find goblins, elves, satyrs, fawns, and some accounts of aliens, little pointy ears, green skin. It really makes you think of old stories of witches uh, with the pointy ears and green skin and the hook noses. And it makes you wonder if these things are actually real. And speaking with a lot of these witnesses personally, face to face, they're not lying when they tell me these stories. They're really seeing these things. So what are they? Are they interdimensional beings, like the portal that opened on the ground? I was talking to other people who've seen other creatures, and often the portals are described as holes that just open and close. So I actually have some ideas for videos in the future. If you've seen anything open a portal similar to what was described by one of the stories here, the holes that open and close, please share. And it's very hard to find any stories of these little goblin-like people. So if you heard anything about them, or if you had encounters with them, please share. Because I don't think they're being talked about as much as they should be, because people feel like they're crazy and it's stupid and it's impossible. Because these are creatures of mythology, they're not real. They're not real. But what do we really know? We don't really know much so if you have any encounters with these strange things please let me know email me at xenohuntersinfo@gmail.com. at gmail.com thank you for watching this is kitavitoak signing out